The door opens and shuts, the lock clicks. Her laugh is all the greeting, all the recognition they need. She hadn't been sure he'd gotten the text until he knocked. She presses some buttons on her desk, now the phone won't ring. The man in the white shirt lets the blinds clatter down to the windowsill and the clear afternoon city disappears. She resists the impulse to turn and watch him. Calm and deliberate, he comes behind her chair, puts his hands on the back behind her shoulders. Her hands can't decide where to roost. They move from her lap to the black plastic arms of her office chair and back. He smiles, and he smiles a bit more because she can't see him smile. When his thumbnail grazes her skin as he gathers up her hair, she sucks air through clenched teeth. He sticks his fingers in it like a comb and twists so that her chin tips back, her neck lengthens, tender and straining. Her closed eyelids tremble and he listens, pleased, to the catch in her breath when his beard brushes her throat. The human trail of breath evaporates from her jaw, from her ear. Her hands have come to rest on her thighs, palms up, like she's praying. She's licking her lips when he pulls the chair back and spins it around, hard and fast, and stops it with his knee against her thigh. Her chuckle is low and soft and stops short when he looks in her eyes and shakes his head. No. One knee to either side of hers now, he pulls the chair closer until all she can see is the white of his shirt. A scent like bourbon and rose water rises from her flushed skin. Her wrists are sturdy and soft in his fingers as he puts her hands on his hips, curves her strong fingers around the thick brown leather of his belt. She looks up a long way up a pristine shirt front and her lips part slightly at the steadiness, the steadfastness with which his eyes meet hers. There's no fumbling, no wasted effort. One hand finds with merciless precision a nipple already hard. The other hand slips beneath her blouse, slipping past a scooped neck down beneath a bra strap. His fingers are thick and warm and very strong and she almost cries out from the pinches. He feels her grip shift on his belt, her knuckles press into thick seams, into firm flesh as he plucks at her, pinching and twisting. Hot puffs of air fill the space between her mouth and his belly, each cruel pinch buying one would-be groan. Satiny bra cups rasp on rough knuckles as he works his way up the outside curves. He watches to see if she blinks back the tears or lets them spill. He shifts his weight slightly and she sobs at the smell of him filling the back of her throat. He twists two folds of skin just at the tops of her breasts, trapped between his thumbs and the sides of his callous index fingers. The tears come fast and effortless, and he shivers just once with the thought of how she would arch her back and shiver up into him if he could just bite her now there at the side of her neck, but that would leave a mark. He wishes he didn't care about keeping promises. She's shaking now. He plants red blossoms to either side of her breastbone, makes garlands down the insides of sweet curves, relentless. When he reaches her nipples, she looks up again, staring at his mouth, focused on the softness amidst the whiskers. He rolls her nipples between thumb and forefinger harder, and, because her, and then harder again because her tremors keep tugging them the other way. It's a struggle to fight her as she pulls, fierce and erratic on his belt, an effort to ignore the ache and strain of himself under the canvas. He centers his weight in his boots and crushes her breasts, forcing her back against the chair. He stands firm, rock to her shipwreck. In a moment, he offers her a handkerchief. She accepts. She folds her tears precisely, exactly, and with great care tucks the blue and white striped square into his shirt pocket, patting it over his heart. Her fingers linger on the shirt front, and she looks into the white comfort of broadcloth just for a minute. When she takes her hand away, he breathes out with a shudder and steps back, now feeling there's way too much space between his knees. Before he goes, he raises the blinds and lets the city back in. She takes his hand and kisses it just once where the wrist begins, and he feels it glowing there under his shirt cuff, under his jacket cuff, as the door closes behind him with a click as he rides the elevator to the street, as he stands in the sun on the sidewalk and looks up to her office window and pats the pocket that holds his phone.